Hello, I'm Richard Chalice and I'm going to show you my model of Stockport Tiviotdale, which originally ran under the auspices of the Cheshire Lines Committee, but now we're looking at it around 1957. I'm afraid it's still a work in progress in that I don't have the station building, but I'll show you a picture of what it should be in a minute. There are too few locomotives and not quite the right coaches and so on. Problems that we all suffer. I will begin with some maps and traffic details and then we'll have a closer look at the layout proper and its traffic. I would like to thank some of my friends for an enormous amount of help during the development of this project. Derek Senior for freight stock, John Brighton for locomotives, John Elliott for semaphore signals and much more, and to Jeff Taylor for building me a most beautiful signal box. This is me on the down platform in the late 1950s with my camera bag in my hand. The down starter is clear, so let's have a look at what I might have seen. To put Stockport Tiviotdale into context, here's a map which shows where it is, the blue circle just to the right of centre. And if we look at the principal traffic flows, if we start somewhere in the middle, the blue arrow in the middle points towards Manchester Central for passengers and for bits of freight, other places in between. Going to the west, we see a red circle which is Partington Coal Basin, you can't guess what goes there, and then further west the brown arrow routes towards Warrington and Liverpool. <clears throat> there was also some traffic, particularly limestone, down to Northwich and other goods to the area around Chester, that's the grey arrow at the bottom. Looking eastwards we have traffic over the woodhead to the Sheffield area marked by the green arrow and then the red arrow at the bottom on the right indicates traffic either going to Sheffield via the Hope Valley in the Peak District or to the area around Derby and Nottingham. As you can see there's probably quite a lot of traffic and um, the implication is that my fiddle yard should really be 10 times as large as it is. So I've had to do quite a lot of selection and compression in traffic patterns and destinations. And now the traffic on the line. Here you can see a table of the types of trains 
and the numbers of them in the up direction and the down direction and the final column on the right is the total. I've taken this data from the public timetable 1948 for passenger trains and the working timetable 1957 for freight trains. You will see that there are relatively few passenger trains uh, going to either Liverpool Central or Manchester Central or Sheffield or Derby and or Nottingham. The table is dominated by class H and class J freights and looking at photographs I note that an awful lot of the H's were actually mineral trains as well. So the line is dominated essentially by coal in one direction and coal empties in the other direction. I have of course just taken a very small selection of these to present to you today. This is a copy of an old Ordnance Survey map showing the general area of Tiviotdale Station. It's, uh, the model is uh, pretty well to scale up to the ends of the platforms, after which on the easterly side, instead of going off to the east and northeast, it turns sharply right to go round into the fiddle yard. The area in blue uh, was once a locomotive yard, which hadn't been used for decades, and I haven't had room to include that into the model. So that everything that's in the area in blue is reduced to a single bay road, an extra bay road, on the upside of the station. I mentioned in the introduction that the model wasn't quite yet complete. The main reason for this is that I haven't yet made the station building, which you can see in this picture. There were equally complex buildings on the other side of the station, including a rather complicated overbridge. I think it'll take me one or two years to complete these, so you won't be seeing them for a little while yet. And now after all that information and maybe too much chit chat and messing around, I expect that you'd like to have a proper look at the model of Stockport Tiviotdale. So here we go. It's just before 6.30 in the morning and we're about to see the 0631 Manchester Central to Sheffield via the Hope Valley just drawing in and there it is. More about the wrong locomotive in a minute. Here we are on the up platform and the starter is clear so we're ready to go. I'm going to run around to the down platform so I can take a decent picture of the train. View from the down platform, and here is our train just departing. The locomotive should really be a 4P compound, or a standard 4 or a standard 5. But they're in the stops at the moment, so we'll have to settle with my old 2P. Here is the 0638 arrival from Liverpool Central. It will terminate at Stockport, after which the train will be transferred to the down platform. The locomotive will run round in preparation for its journey back to Liverpool at 0735. Signal 42, clear. To move forward. Mm -hmm. 
It's now moving forward onto the viaduct, which will take a little time because progress is slow. It's now on the viaduct and it will move forward to just past the signals and when it stops the fireman will ring a gong or buzzer in the signal box so that the signalman can set the points and set the signals for the train to reverse back into the down platform. Buzzer coming up. Signal 6 clear. Reversing over the single slip crossover. With my track work it's always an awkward operation but today it seems to be fine. Reversing into the down platform, having come off the crossover, ready to stop. Locomotive beginning to run around the train. It will reverse down the through road and into the tunnel where there's another gong to tell the signalman to set the points and clear the ground signal so that it can then move up to couple to the train. Reversing down the through road coming back out of the tunnel and approaching the train. There we are, arrived. Seven fourteen, and here we have a train load of coal going between Lotram and Shockley, so it's got quite a journey back.
It's approaching 7.35 in the morning and here is our train ready to depart for Liverpool. The headlamp is in the right place but before we go let's just go and check the other end of the train. Here we are, tail lamp correct, so we are ready to go. Off we go into the dark and gloomy Stockport Tunnel on our way to Liverpool Central. When the train has gone, we'll do something a little different. Now we're going to have a look at the buildings at the west end of the model and this is a view from the tracks looking at the bridge over the railway which carries Lancashire Hill. This is a close-up of the buildings on Lancashire Hill. The only ones that are left are the small garage sloping roof building at the bottom and the chapel, which in fact is a Christadelphian meeting room and still exists and ends with a sandstone precipice over the M60 motorway. It's quite interesting because it has been a synagogue and a school and the Christadelphian meeting room. Because of the absence of photographs and the fact that the buildings no longer exist, I had to guess this one, but it's quite an interesting looking back alley. These buildings are at the back of the layout and you can barely see them. Uh, they're guessed from their footprint on an old ordnance survey map, uh, although I do have photographs of the front, which I've used for the other side, which is in fact more correct. Just to the left of the buildings we've just seen, there is Chapel Cottage, which used to be part of the property of the Christadelphian Chapel, but in fact no longer exists. What a shame. Here is the rear of Chapel Cottage, onto a street known as Old Road, or sometimes called Dodge Hill, after the name of the hill that these buildings sit on. And at the rear, there are some nice three-storey brick houses, which we'll have a closer look at right now. These three-storey buildings <clears throat> were made from a single photograph, so very much is guessed. Although, as I said before, more was guessed on the rear side of the buildings. But I enjoyed making them all the same. So, that's it for Lancashire Hill. Now, back to the railway.